Celestials are just kind of big jerks, aren't they? Like, sure, they're some of the most powerful beings in all the universe, but that doesn't mean they're necessarily that nice. More often than not, they're bad guys, and I thought for today's video, I'd run down some of the most despicable and worst acts of villainy these giant monstrosities have ever committed in the Marvel Universe. What's the Black Vortex? How many times have they tried to destroy Earth? What's up with the Deviants? There's a lot to talk about, so let's get started right now. You know, there's an image in my head of Celestials all sitting around a gigantic table and wondering what horrible item to create next. Like, their track record for celestial artifacts isn't that great because most of them spark war, conflict, destruction, and just generally cause a lot of heroes and villains to fight. So I wanted to start out with the creation of the Black Vortex, which was a device created by Celestials that would act like a mirror and either give people a taste of what their cosmic potential would look like by enhancing their powers or take some cosmic powers away from the people who used it. Overall, it's a nifty little artifact, and as I said, it did cause heroes and villains to fight over it. This isn't one of their overtly villainous items they created, but the fact that they'd make something like this when really they should have focused their attention on other things shows it's one of the worst things they've done. You know how the overall message of Jurassic Park is how we shouldn't meddle with genetic engineering? Well, obviously the Celestials have never seen that movie. They love to meddle with genetic engineering. The problem is they think of their species sort of like experiments and aren't afraid to mess around to try to create the ultimate superior genetic race. But the problem with that is there's a lot of room for error. Although they created the perfect Eternals, this led to the creation of the monstrous Deviants, which worked hard to enslave and capture most of humanity. Whoops. Already creating the monsters that almost destroy humanity isn't great, but also their response to the Deviants aren't great either. Instead of trying to help or fix the Deviants, the Celestials decided to utterly wipe them off the face of the Earth, and that sort of hasty decision only caused more problems down the line. Okay, so I've talked about some of their comic actions, but I didn't want this to exclusively be about the comics. Celestials are gradually becoming more and more of a bigger deal in the MCU, and their roles will only continue to expand in the future. So let's talk about the most villainous thing we've actually seen them do in live action. The first to talk about would be the end of Eternals, where it was revealed that the Earth is actually just a big egg, and the Eternals were sent to Earth in order to help the arrival of Tiamat the community. Communicator. Well, he should have communicated a bit better, right? This event shows that even though Earth is clearly the center of the universe in the MCU, the Celestials don't see it that way. They're more than happy to birth their Celestial and destroy the planet's entire existence in the process without blinking an eye. Yeah, all the tremendously cute puppies and baby kittens and other adorable animals that you love, yeah, Celestials don't care about any of those and wanted to blow up the Earth to accomplish their goal. But you know what I wish? That the MCU would at least reference the fact that a giant celestial nearly popped out of Earth. This should be game-changing information for anyone on the planet, but no one has addressed it yet. So the end of the Eternals movie saw Erishim the Judge arrive to perform his namesake in Judge Earth. It makes for a fascinating setup for a sequel, but it also happened in the comics, and it's all around a pretty scummy thing to do, right? I mean, who's Erishim to judge us? How does that even work? Is Erishim going to judge that I've watched Captain America the Winter Soldier 17 times in the last year? Mind your business, Erishim. Anyway, in the comics, the fourth host of Celestials came to Earth to judge their genetic experiments. Odin tried to stop them but was defeated, and the only reason Earth survived was that Gaia offered up 12 special humans as basically a sacrifice. That's super messed up. At least the Celestials then left and wiped the minds of humanity to make them forget that ever happened. Okay, quick, if Celestials showed up in today's world and we needed 12 special humans to satisfy them and save us all, who would we all pick? Probably Tom Cruise for one of them, right? Hey, speaking of game-changing information, that is the perfect segue to take a minute and talk about today's awesome sponsor. You know one thing I would miss if the Celestials cracked the Earth like an egg? Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of engaging and creative classes that help you learn new skills or master some old ones you may have forgotten about. You want to learn how to cook? How to fix your car? How to unleash your inner artist? How to create stellar YouTube content? 
Skillshare literally has it all. It's such an amazing opportunity to meet like-minded people, and it's so easy to use that even I, a disembodied floating CBR head, could figure it out. And seriously, what are you waiting for? You never know when a giant celestial is going to mess up your day, so I'm going to make you a special deal right now. The first 1,000 people who sign up using the link in the description below will get a full one-month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity right now. Well, not right right now, but right after this video. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring, and now back to the Celestials. And Celestials are pretty bad in every universe too. Probably the worst alternate universe versions of Celestials come from Earth 4280. See, with that much power, it's so easy to tip over into villainy. Absolute power corrupts absolutely after all. Well, the Celestials over there became convinced that with all their power, they were gods and they weren't just content with conquering their universe. Nope, they wanted to conquer every universe across the multiverse. See, why can people not just be happy conquering their own universe? Conquering the multiverse sounds like too ambitious of a task. Anyway, this led to a team up between Galactus and an alternate future version of Franklin Richards in order to stop these mad celestials. So, if you create a group of monsters called the Exterminators, then you have to look at yourself in the mirror and ask, hey, are we the bad guys here? Because it seems pretty likely. So, I've established how much the Celestials love creating new life and balance and all that, so when they were making all the good stuff, they figured they needed some bad stuff as well for balance. They couldn't let the good overrun things, or else things are too much like a paradise, and life's made to suffer a bit, I guess. So, they made the Exterminators. The way the story goes, the Celestials made these beings of pure death and destruction, but then the exterminators obviously turned on the Celestials and almost destroyed them. Not being able to defeat them themselves, probably because they forgot to install an off switch like idiots. So what did Celestials do? Decided to put the exterminators out of sight by punting them over to a different universe and sealing that door hopefully forever. That's such a funny way to solve problems in the Marvel Universe, don't you think? Well, of course that didn't work forever, and the exterminators eventually crossed over and caused all all sorts of damage. All right, I have to mention Ego the Living Planet. Yes, Ego is not a celestial in the Marvel comics, he's just a big, angry, normal planet, but the MCU switched up his backstory in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 and made him a celestial. See, back then I imagine it was easier to make those changes, but I do think that causes problems for the newer movies that are trying to establish a genuine celestial lore. But I'm just taking what they gave us. So Ego was a celestial here, and his acts were arguably the most villainous on this list, but because he's only an MCU Celestial, I thought he should go a bit lower on this list. Anyways, Ego seemingly started off nice. He had a cool Kurt Russell look, he loved music like Peter Quill, but he also was housing a terrible secret. He had traveled the cosmos for thousands upon thousands of years, impregnating all sorts of alien species to create children that he hoped would share the Celestial gene so that they could take over the galaxy and rebuild it in Ego's image. That's already pretty icky, but then you factor in that all of his children's skeleton corpses are just hanging out in a cave on the planet, then that's just monstrous. Ego truly was a horrible villain, and I'm so curious going forward how the MCU will address that because Ego is very different than the Celestials we met in Eternals. Do you think they'll retcon it and the other Celestials will say, oh yeah, Ego, he just thought he was a Celestial this whole time? Maybe. Okay, I already mentioned the Exterminators, and after that whole debacle, Celestials decided to try a different approach to bring balance to the universe, and it was equally as stupid and villainous. Instead of huge monsters called Exterminators, they created something called the Death Seed, which, come on, you know you're the bad guys at that point. And the Death Seed was pretty messed up as well. So the Celestials would give these Death Seeds to certain chosen individuals, and they would help prune all the weak genetic races to help all the superior races rise up. It had a dark hold type of vibe where it would infect whoever had it and make them believe that wiping out billions of lives was actually for the greater good. This was most famously used by the villain Apocalypse, who I'll talk more about in a second, but they were perfect little tools of destruction in certain X-Men villain plots to wipe out the inferior humans to help the superior mutants. But to show that the Celestials weren't all bad, they did also create the Life Seed, which did the opposite of the Death seed. But just because you create that balance doesn't make you any less of a villain. That's sort of like saying, hey, I invented the cure for this deadly disease, but I also invented the deadly disease. So yeah. 
This is just a minor entry that I wanted to shout out. So Celestials have made a ton of enemies in their long history, and one of the biggest is Null, the god of darkness and the creator of the symbiotes. Null hates Celestials and wants to wipe them all out, but in his huge rampage, his abilities allow him to take over the bodies of the Celestials he killed and warp them like puppets. He basically reanimates a few of them using his gooey black tendrils, and they're able to do some of his bidding in his name. So this is one in instance where the Celestials weren't in total control of their actions, but were doing super villainous things, so I thought it deserved a special shout out. Plus, I wanted to mention it because Null would be a fantastic villain in the MCU as the cosmic side of things continues to expand and grow in the next few years. So I mentioned Apocalypse earlier, and I wanted to expand on him in more detail in my last entry. Apocalypse is arguably the worst individual villain the Celestials ever helped create. The guy was born in Egypt and was the first mutant, and he would have been a great villain on his own, but then he went and found Celestial technology that upped his game tenfold. The fusion of Celestial armor and equipment with his already enhanced abilities made him one of the worst villains in all of Marvel Comics. And not worst as in bad, but I mean, sort of bad, but not bad as in bad, bad. Oh gosh, I'm trapped in a weird loop. I mean, it turned him into a fantastic villain. Like, without the influence of the Celestial, known as Aeson the Searcher, maybe Apocalypse would have been stopped back in those ancient times, and we'd never have to sit through an X-Men Apocalypse movie. But nope, the Celestials filled his head with ideas of becoming the most powerful conqueror of all time, who could shape the world in his image, and we all suffered because of it. Do you think the Celestials will continue to play a big part in the MCU going forward? I mean, they kind of have to, right? They have such deep ties with both the past and the present of the Marvel Universe that I really hope we can learn more about them down the line. But what do you think? 